It might sound like a protest from the West Bank, but it's not. It's France. And the man being called to lead this pro-Palestinian chorus is a once humble French father. His name, Josie Beauvais. On the streets of Paris tonight, it's Josie Beauvais, not the President Jacques Chirac, who rallies the people. But the President and the farmer could be reading from the same script. C'est une manifestation pour dénoncer ceux qui veulent faire la guerre. C'est dénoncer, c'est dénoncer d'abord Bush, c'est dénoncer Blair, c'est dénoncer Berlusconi, c'est dénoncer Asnard. Tous ces gens qui aujourd'hui veulent nous entraîner dans la guerre. Of course, Mr. José Beauvais, uh, you know, has no electoral mandate, he has never been elected, and his popularity is very volatile. It's why he must move with the stream. And today, the prevalent stream inside the European Union is, of course, pacifism, is against war. Far from the national capital and the international stage of President Jacques Chirac, Josie Beauvais hails from another land, France's rural south, the Lazark region. From his hilltop farm, Josie Beauvais has launched assault after assault on what he sees as the evils of international big business. Five years ago, it was the bogey of genetically modified crops. If this goes on all over the world, it's going to be the end of family farm. Typically, Josie Beauvais took direct action. So, the first time we we went in, in inside of a factory, we found the GM crops, uh, the corn, and we mixed it with the ordinary corn. So it was impossible for the transnational corporation, Novartis, to use it anymore because it was impossible to know which was the good one and which was the best one. For that multi-million dollar act of sabotage, Josie Beauvais has been convicted and now faces 14 months in prison. But it was the Big Mac attack of 1999 that made Josie Beauvais a true folk hero. Beauvais and a group of farmers took apart the local McDonald's to retaliate against a World Trade Organization decision which hurt the regions of Rockford cheesemakers. People didn't know anything about WTO. And the fact that WTO was deciding what you have to eat every day for French people and European people in general, it was terrible. The WTO, genetic modification, globalization, symbols in a struggle for French identity. It all fits neatly into Josie Beauvais' anti-US, anti-war message. Claudine. Claudine. And it's why this busload of locals travels with him on an eight-hour odyssey to Paris, where they'll march in the streets. People say, why does the United States want to go in Iraq? The only reason is oil. And this, everybody sees this. What's happening now in Iraq is just the next step for the United States to control the production of oil. So people think that this war is only a war for oil. It's clear that in France, and I think in a way it's specifically French, there is a, a, an anti-Americanism root, you know, and it's very deep. And why? we cannot accept to be inferior, you know. In the French mind, in the French mentality, we are equal to the United States. We are equal. France, when you look at the media, when you read the French newspaper, France is equal to the United States. Is it true? I don't know. As worldwide demonstrations against war on Iraq got underway, in Paris, Josie Beauvais' messages hit all the right buttons. Opposition à la guerre, c'est pour que on ne recommence pas la même erreur que nous avons fait en 1990 et 91. These veterans from the first Gulf War marched with 27 replica coffins in memory of colleagues killed in that conflict. 
Moi, je suis ancien vétéran de la guerre du Golfe et des Balkans. Et je vous garantis que je ne suis plus du tout comme avant. The demonstrations gave power to the arm of the United States' chief tormentor, Jacques Chirac, who'd been fending off American claims of rank opportunism. Josie Beauvais led the Paris demonstration, his views eagerly sought by France's national media. What's clear is that this is not only about the United States' position on Iraq, it's about a clash of cultures. When the United States refuse to recognize their the international court, people don't understand. When Mr. Bush refused to, uh, to go on with the Kyoto's uh, negotiation, people don't understand. So people are angry against that, but they are not angry against the American people. Oh, you know, José Bové is, you know, once is Asterix, you know. You cannot understand José Bové if you don't know this typical French or Gallic character, which is Asterix. <laughs> what do you make of that description? Well, it's, it's a, quite, it's a joke, it's not, a, but pe for people, Asterix uh, represents resistance to oppression or resistance against the empire, the Roman Empire. So maybe a lot of people understand this as resistance against uh, globalization. Globalization is a new way of the empire. But the other reading of Asterix is that he embodies traditional French values, which are no longer sustainable in the world the way it is these days. I say very often that uh, Asterix was in his little village, surrounded by the empire. We tried to do the, in the other side, that we want to surround the empire. That's the, a new way to make resistance. So we need millions of Asterix all, all over the world. For the Bush administration, one Asterix is perhaps enough. President Jacques Chirac, who's hijacked the European debate on the US-led war, is another version of the same character in the eyes of Philippe Moreau-Defarge. Yes, of course. There is a strong French tradition for, coming from De Gaulle and even before De Gaulle. And he wants, what, what is the idea? I am, you know, the man, I am a free man, you know. I think he, I, 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 if I, I take the word of Chirac, he would say, I am a free man. I don't speak in French interest, in the name of French interest. I speak in name of mankind, of humanity, and uh, facing this big power, of course the United States, which is our friend, but it is such a big power, I must defend, I must protect, you know, the basic right of humanity. France's distinct distaste for war continues to infuriate the United States. An old friendship is being strained to breaking point. Omaha Beach, Normandy where wave after wave of American servicemen were killed in 1944 as they came ashore to liberate France. If there's sacred ground for the Franco-American friendship, this is it, the American War Cemetery at Colville-sur-Mer. Over 9,000 crosses bear testimony to the loss of American life. Here, charges of ingratitude and cowardice have alienated even the United States' best friends. Ouh, là, j'étais, ça, ça met aussi aussi triste que en colère. Voilà, ça rend aussi triste que que ça met en colère parce que, mais ça c'est politique. Marianne Eldin Vanoura continues to honour the dead. She's one of a number of French people who have close ties with the families of the U.S. servicemen who died here. She and many others were devastated by this front page attack from the New York Post. C'est vraiment immoral. C'est vraiment très très moche de faire ça. C'est le manque de respect, c'est le plus grand manque de respect qu'on peut porter à une à une personne qui est décédée d'utiliser sa tombe sans son consentement comme ça sur un sujet qui est aussi inapproprié. Despite the bonds made in blood, this friend of America in this small village believes the United States must get United Nations backing before it invades Iraq. Jose Bové is no supporter of Saddam Hussein, but he sees no reason at all for war on Iraq. European people, French people, live near the Mediterranean Sea. We live very clear near with the Arabian people. 
And we know that if this war goes on, this is going to destroy all what's happening in this area. Whether or not France backs a US-led attack, Josie Beauvais is a winner. He gets to keep his moral rectitude. Every day, France remembers the cost of war. Now the country is gambling that its opposition to war will pay off by strengthening its hand in the Middle East and in Europe. For the moment, at least, that seems a good bet.